Alrighty, today we are finishing up the welding car build. We are gonna get this thing entirely done. If you missed the first video on this build, basically, here's what we've got done so far, the main frame. We're gonna have this Everlast welder and this plasma cutter on there. Here is a diagram which has changed because there's a lot of comments that made a lot of sense. We're gonna put the welder on the left side, plasma cutter on the right side. We're gonna have a C25 bottle and an argon bottle because this is a multi-process welder so we can do MIG, TIG, and stick with it. So we'll have it set up to do both MIG and TIG at all times, very easy to do. The goal is to basically have this be like a really nice, very easily mobile welding cutting rig to do all sorts of fabrication on the car. Allow me to kind of keep this thing by the bench at all times and not have to deal with moving this TIG welder with the water cooler and all that stuff. This is kind of the bench TIG, mobile welding cutting fabricating rig to do stuff all around the shop. So I'm really excited for this. It's gonna be really fun because we're gonna hang the plasma cutter to give us more storage space and the bottles are gonna be integrated into the cart and all that stuff. So I just finished welding up the supports for the diamond plate four, cut up these pieces of flat bar to weld in the corners here for the top diamond plate four support. So when I'm building stuff like this, it's a lot of tedious welding and I like to jam out so that kind of, I don't know, it kind of keeps me in the flow and keeps me grooving. To do that, I use this Cove speaker, which happens to be today's video sponsor. So I absolutely love this thing. I have put it through its paces. I have beat the crap out of it, dropping it, all sorts of abuse to this thing, and you wouldn't even notice. I've used it for everything from working in the shop and listening to music and jamming out to literally in my Sephiro where the stock stereo is not loud enough. This thing overpowers it and sounds better. So I'll just take this thing on the trip with me so I can listen to music. The battery life is fantastic. The audio quality is great. The sound level that this thing can achieve is mind blowing for how small it is and how long the battery lasts. It's got a built-in sub, so it's got nice bass. I mean, this thing works better than most of my car's stereos. Like, it's mind blowing. Cove is offering you guys an amazing discount. If you use my discount code, I will put it right here on the screen and I'll put it in the link down below. Highly, highly recommend this thing. I absolutely love it. So huge thanks to Cove for sponsoring this video. Crank some jams, get back to welding. Alright, you guys want to hear something funny? So this is my old bandsaw blade. I recently picked up some new ones and I bought a slightly finer tooth count and I was like, man, these things aren't cutting for anything. Well, it's because the blades are going the wrong way. I put the uh, old bandsaw blade back on and now it's freaking ripping. <laughs> it took me forever to cut through that piece with this one and then this one, it flew right through it. So that's good. Makes me feel better. I was like, man, I forgot how slow of a cutting device this is. Nope. Just the wrong blade. Oh, because we're hitting that screw. Okay. All right. Got our little hangers on. He's welded on. All right. Moment of truth. All right, well, it took a little finesse and didn't account for it. The screw heads on the bottom, you know, so it's like super snug, but it, it went in. It's in there nice and good. So I'm happy with that. I just got to squeeze it back out and weld it. These vents on the side barely squeeze through. So we'll get her out though. I'm really, that looks sweet though. I was really, this is, you know, the look I was looking for. I thought this would be cool to have this thing floating up here. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's weld this out and then we're gonna move on to bottle mounting strategy. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do for that yet. Something, obviously. All right, getting it out wasn't that bad. All right, it's all welded up. Plasma cutter is in. Looks pretty snazzy. It really worked out flipping the plasma cutter this side because the air line comes in on this side. Be nice for just plugging the air hose into it. All right, cool. Uh, I think I'm gonna bring it down so I can test fit a bottle in there and get an idea of what I wanna do for the bottles. I'm gonna have to cut out probably that corner right there, or at least some of it to fit both bottles. Gotcha. 
something like a circle to get this tank as tight this way as possible. Um, and then I should just be able to put an in-between bar and an end bar, um, and that'll be my, my two tank spots. I got to do something for the bottom down here because it, it is recessed a bit for the diamond. I guess once the diamond plate's on there, it might take up that extra bit of distance. All right, so let's get to cutting and refitting. So I welded these plates in just to kind of give me a little bit of height since this is recessed for the diamond plate. Basically this just gives me that little bit of additional height back that I need so that the tank sit level doesn't give them some extra support. So I decided instead of trying to make this piece fit, which has like an eighth inch or more gap on each side, this material is going to be a lot handier for me for other stuff like small projects. I've got a good bit of this stuff left over so what I'm going to do is make my essentially containment area for the tanks like this. You have a 45 go that way, and then I can bring the aluminum plate all the way to the edge here, and that'll give me even more support for that. So I think that's how I'm gonna do it. So let's speed this process up. Three, two, one, that was backwards. Man, cutting with the bandsaw is so much better. I mean, that cut is mint. I ah, love the bandsaw. All right, I said we we're gonna fly through this. Enough dilly-dallying, back to work. There's, you know, there's a little bit of room for them to move around, which is kind of what I wanted, so they're easy to get in and out. And all I gotta do now is just add a bar in the middle, and we're done with that. So, moving right along. Light speed is working as I had hoped. So, back to work.
All right, I went ahead and got all the mounting points on, you know, to hang the lead. So MIG gun, ground clamp for the Everlast welder. We've got the TIG torch for the Everlast welder, which I didn't show you guys this. I meant to put it in the other video, but I forgot. I got this uh, CK80 torch head for it. So this thing's tiny. It's only rated to 80 amps, but you know, my thoughts are I'm gonna use this a lot for tacking exhaust on the car and I wanted the smallest torch possible. If I need to weld something at higher amps, I have this welder, I can use this. Uh, but this is kind of like my micro torch mini setup to get into super tight spaces. Let me compare. I mean, this is also a small torch and you can see the size difference, right? Because this is about as small as it gets before you get to this level. And then I put this crazy low rider gas lens on it. So anyway, basically mini torch, getting in the tight areas, welding stuff on the car, tacking stuff on the car. So MIG, whatever. Uh, TIG torch and then we got the plasma cutter, it's ground clamp, it's lead for the plasma cutter gun torch, whatever you want to call it, I guess torch. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And then I went ahead and tried to uh, TIG weld my initials in there. TR built with a stainless filler rod to get some color. It came out okay. I'm not like super thrilled with it. The I was doing it on the ground and I had the door open and the wind kept blowing the argon away. But three things we gotta do. We gotta paint it, obviously. So I gotta take it all apart. I need to weld out all these hanger points. I just wanted to make sure they were all good before I welded them out. Weld all those out, paint and diamond plate and caster wheels. Since I have the welder set back, I need to go under this lip of the welder, you know, back to about here, over to here, but then the rest of the way back, only under it like a quarter inch and then stop back there where the uh, tanks are gonna sit. So it's gonna be a little tricky too. Uh, I, I, got, I got the measurements written down though. What I need for this bottom section and the top section will be a lot easier to measure out as I go. So yeah, I'm gonna admire it for another second because seeing my, my vision come to life, it's gonna look even sicker with the diamond plate, two bottles back there. I think I'm gonna tape this off, or I guess clear coat it, tape it off, and then paint the rest black or something. Maybe I'll do a different color. I need to decide on that too, man. I got a lot of decisions to make. Okay, enough talking, more decisions, more work. <laughs> so I found these uh, steel wheeled ones and I debated for a bit um, but these are a lot shorter and a lot smaller footprint for the same weight rating that I need So they'll actually fit perfectly in the tubing. So I kind of went for it It might be a little more noisy, but I feel like it's probably a better bet for a welding cart And then I got this uh, forged hammered antique pewter color. So we'll try that. I might regret it Might regret not painting it black, but we'll give it a shot We got some paint on this thing, taped up the clear coated area, taped up the casters, letting it dry. So now I just need to start cutting out my diamond plate. So I think I'm gonna do the top first because it's most important. And then once we get that figured out, we'll do the bottom. The freaking what bugs, get off my paint. Get it out and then I'll decide, get out of away from my paint. Love bugs, they're the freaking worst, man. Giant sheet of beautiful unscratched diamond plate. Out for a look. <laughs> done before it gets too late. It's already dark. Let's see if it 
convinced. Alright, got them all riveted on. This freaking <laughs> Milwaukee rivet gun is amazing. This thing is a freaking ripper. I figured since we're gonna be rolling this one around a lot, trying to minimize that noise. I'm gonna probably, I need to order some more rivets and slam a few more down where I can, but man, I'm proud of this thing. Come, I didn't rush through any of it, you know, I was just really, really happy with it. Also, it's nice to have my freaking workbench back. <laughs> Um, these drill bits are really good. I've been using them a bit. I mentioned them in another video. I ordered them on Amazon and I'm really happy with them. I'll uh, put the link to them below. It's like 56 bucks and there's a lot of sizes in here. They are super sharp, really, really solid. So anyway, let's get all the stuff on here. Ta-da! Hold on, let's roll it over here so you can actually see it. Rolls nice though. So this is it all complete. Got our little TIG torch, plasma cutter, plasma cutter leads, MIG leads. Man, it's always a nice feeling to see something go from this to an actual thing. <laughs> like, it's so cool. I am so happy with how this thing came out. It is exactly how I envisioned it. Everything came together exactly like I was hoping it would and how I had it in my head and I love it. I don't know why I think it's so freaking cool having the plasma cutter hanging. I, I, I don't know, I'm just really happy with this design. I know it takes up extra floor space and whatever. Um, you know, it could have been longer and narrower, wh whatever. I'm happy with it like this because I have this huge work area up top, which is gonna be super handy when fitting stuff up and building exhaust, being able to set pieces there and then grab them and not have to be setting stuff on the floor. I think it'll be very, very helpful. Really, really happy with how this thing came out. I'm happy with the metal wheels. They look sick on there with the paint, and I'm just so happy with the end result, you know? I put a lot of time into this thing, but I just, I'm really, really pleased with the result. So, still need to get another uh, Argon bottle. So I have the one on this machine, but obviously I'm not gonna be taking this on and off because the whole point of this is to be super mobile, not tied down anywhere where I can just grab it, roll it over to where I need to be. Um, so I'm gonna get another Argon bottle. I'm gonna use this flow meter off this welder because this is a lower end one that comes with the machines. I want to get a really nice one for this machine because they do a lot of like precise TIG welding on here. You know, sometimes this one gets bumped out of adjustment and stuff, but it'll be perfectly fine for this. So another bottle, use that flow meter, nice flow meter for this thing. We're pretty much done, but yeah, super, super happy with this, man. So happy with it. It looks so good. I am so stoked. Got all the storage down here that we can get to from both sides. Sorry, I'm just excited. Let me know what you guys think of the end result. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I would appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. We've got uh, next fab project. We'll be building a cart stand for this thing, like one of those that goes up and down. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in that or not. Little back shot real quick. Oh, and bringing the RX-7 back. So for those of you who missed the FC, I am gonna finish it. I've decided, I don't know, spurred of motivation. We got a little bit of a lull in projects while we're waiting on an engine for the Fummins build. So I'm like, you know what? I might as well get it together let's see what it takes to get that thing together we'll make new mounts whatever let's just get it done and get it driving so i'm excited for that so anyway that's probably the next video i'll see you guys then thanks for watching thanks for subscribing goodbye now i just gotta figure out where to put this monstrosity <laughs> Ooh, make it work